Swami Sharadananda, you are most welcome to Lifts Energy Podium. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And I thought since this is we're going to be talking about mudras, I'd actually start with a mudra that everyone probably knows, which is Namaste. Namaste. Is this used for hello as well as bye bye? Uh, yes, because uh, what it really means is, um, you know, my soul or greets your, but actually we're one. We're one. Beautiful. Thank you for a fantastic introduction. That was very nice. I uh, just want to tell all the viewers. Uh, about you very shortly. Swami Sharadananda is one of the authors that we have launched books from before. So we already have two books from you. So we start with this one. It's It was launched two years ago, Yoga and Serena, the Kraft. And then last summer we came with Andingen's Kraft. And both these books have been very popular in in the book club. So we're super happy to now be, uh, launch the third of this series called Händernas helande kraft på svenska. So what is the name in English? It's the Mudras for Mudras. Modern Life. Mudras for Modern Life. Yes. I thought this, this book is very niche, but then again, it's not. So it's a very broad book and still niche. And can you explain a little bit about this book? I love this book because it, it gives me energy to dive into something that I'm quite interested in, even though I know very little. Right. Well, it's about mudras, which are hand gestures. And we all use gestures like somewhat, right? Like we go like this or sure. What? And we have this in all traditions. I mean, the one that I always use in class is this one. You know this one? No. Oops. If you want, I'm sure some of your viewers will recognize this. This is from Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so it means it's the Vulcan greeting. You know, when you go to the planet Vulcan, hmm. it means live long and prosper. And actually, it's a real mudra. Mm. You know, because Leonard Nimoy, who played Mr. Spock on the television series, wow. he studied Kabbalah. And in Kabbalah, right, this is a mudra. It's actually, you do it with both hands. And it means um, they're sort of together a little bit. So it looks a little bit like uh, a W or it's the Hebrew letter Shin, which stands for Almighty God. So we have mudras, gestures in all traditions. And the idea is that there's different energy moving through our hands. You know, um, in yoga, we call this prana. Um, if you go for acupuncture, they call it chi or ki, depending on whether they study the Chinese or Japanese system. You know, we talk about there are different meridians that start and finish in the hands and the, the feet. You see, so imagine the meridians are like wiring. Mm -hmm. You see, so if you join these two wires or these two wires, you see, it would it would be different. Yeah. You know, it's like um, when the train goes and they shift the um, the track to go the other way. Yes. So we can shift the energy by joining the different fingers. So this is like a very simplistic um, explanation of what mudras are. Um, we, we say the word, technically it means seal. Mm -hmm. So you seal the energy into different channels depending on how you hold your hands. So mudras are like switches that create particular um, flows of energy in the body. And that sounds quite uh, logic since we are energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So 
It's used traditionally in yoga. Of course, in Indian dance, they use mudras a lot, mm -hmm. um, martial arts, meditation, um, different rituals. And, um, you know, we all use, and we all use gestures to express our emotions. Mm -hmm. So we actually have mudras in all, all traditions. Yeah. You see, like, um, Probably no one's noticed this, but if you go into a church, you'll see Jesus, his hands are always like this. Mm -hmm. You see? And the Pope, when he blesses people, you know, he stands on that balcony in St. Peter's Square, his hands are like this. Oh. Yeah. So he uses this mudra. Yeah. Right? So it's not something that's only in India. You know, mm -hmm. we have this in, in all traditions. And in, in, in some instances, maybe we don't think of them as mudras. Uh huh. So mudra is a hand gesture. Yeah, it's a hand gesture that channels the energy in a, a specific way. Yeah. So then we actually have to learn what ways we can channel. And yeah, so that's where the Mudras for Modern Life book comes in. So handy. Tell me a little bit about mudras and your life, because still you have written a book about it. It must be an, a subject of interest. Um, yes, well, I've been uh, studying yoga for quite a while, and I've been teaching it now for, well, I can't even remember, it's like 45, 46 years, so quite a, quite a while. <laughs> You're one of the oldest yogis I know. Well, not not the oldest, but, you know, have practiced for a long time. Yeah. So um, I'm interested in different aspects of Hatha Yoga. And, I mean, nowadays, Hatha Yoga, people think it means the easy yoga you do if you go to the health club and you don't want to do Ashtanga Yoga. But actually, any physical yoga that you do is actually a form of Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga means that you're working with the the prana, channeling the prana in the body by um, putting your body into different positions. You see, like even when you do the asanas, the, the physical exercises, you know, each asana puts the body into different position. It puts pressure on different points. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, giving yourself a shiatsu treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go for shiatsu, they use their hands to break up blockages of energy. Or mm -hmm. acupuncture uses needles, but yogis use asanas to break up blockages. And then, of course, um, we do breathing exercises to try to channel the um, the prana into different areas. And then you could say an extension of breathing exercises is the mudras, mm -hmm. you know, which tries to seal the energy into different channels. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I'm quite interested in this, in the different aspects of yoga um, mm -hmm. that people don't normally think about or talk about or know about. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone thinks yoga is just some physical exercise, but mm -hmm. it's a lot more. It uses every aspect of the being to channel the energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as a yogi myself, I, I think... And, you know, when I come home and talk to um, my husband and um, other friends, they kind of feel awkward coming to a, a true yoga class in a yoga shala because you have to sit like this and they tell you to put the hands in the knees and they have to hold them in a certain way and they feel very awkward about it. So they think this is uh, uh, something that yogis do to... Um, uh, make things special and it's not it's not just because of it it it, it has a meaning it has a, a role in the in the session to, so to say and th that's why it's so interesting to hear so why are we doing these uh, these mudras hmm. how many mudras are there would you say around mm, i would say they're probably i don't know thousands of them, thousands mm. of different ones. But in yoga, we have maybe, um, maybe a hundred or so that we use ordinary, you know, ordinarily for with yoga uh, postures and with pranayama. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
How many different ones do you use in a week or a month or so? Do you vary or do you have a specific few that you use all the time? Um, well, it depends. I mean, for meditation, there I would say there's maybe um, maybe six or eight very usual mudras that people use. But, I, you know, people want to change every day. And I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's good to use one and maybe use it for a while. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, depending on what you're going through in your life at that particular point. Mm -hmm. You see, so for instance, in meditation, I think this is the most well-known one. You know, where you join the tip of the index finger and the thumb. Yeah. Right? And it, it's called chin mudra. Chin, chin, you know, like your chin. Yeah, chin. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it doesn't really relate to chin, but it, it just sounds like chin. Um, you see, so you would rest the hands on the knees or on the thighs with the upward, but if you wanted to... Out like that or like that? Sorry. You would just rest it on the knees or the thighs as long as the palms are upward. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. Exactly. But maybe you're going through a period of your life where you're ungrounded. See, so you might have the hands pointing downward. Mm. Then we would call it Jnana Mudra. Jnana means wisdom. Jnana Mudra. Yeah. Is downwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that the fingers are pointing towards the earth, so you're grounding yourself. Mm. You know, we all go through ungrounded periods in our life. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, you're changing jobs. Maybe you're moving house. Maybe um, someone you love and you really uh, felt that they, you know, they grounded you or you, you really looked to them for support. Then they left. Mm. It could have been voluntarily you know, where they decided to move to another city, or it could be that they died. Mm. You know, it, it's normal for our parents to die before us. And we often feel as though we've lost our support in life. Mm. So maybe if you're going through a period like that, maybe you could use that particular mudra that would help you ground yourself in mm. your meditation. Yeah. You see? So I think it's, which mudra you use depends on what you're going through in your life at that particular time. So meditation is one part where you can use this. Um, is there part of life? Is there another um, session or other other um, moments during a day where you could use a mudra? Um, well, yes, you could use them any time, you know, like say there's one mudra that we call, um, it's called Kamajai mudra. Kamajai. Yeah, Kama, I think everyone's heard the Sanskrit word Kama, you know, mm -hmm. like in Kama Sutra. Yeah. Kama means desire. Desire. And Jaya, mm -hmm. as in Ujjayi breath, it means victory. So um, say you wanted to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. Right, you might use this or eat chocolate. Oh, too much chocolate, yes. <laughs> too much, you know. So you might use this mudra that helps you to uh, reduce indulgences. You see, so you would just take your index finger and push down on the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. You see, we say that every um, finger has a different energy. Mm -hmm. See, so the thumb in particular is what we call fire energy. You know, in, in yoga tradition, we have five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And fire really means um, any kind of energy that's in radiant form, like electricity or magnetism or fire, of course, the sun. Mm. See, so maybe we have too much fire. You know, I really have a burning desire to have a, a chocolate or a cigarette, right? 
so we could sort of push down on that mm -hmm. and decrease that energy. Mm -hmm. See, so I think a general rule we say is that when you join the index finger, when you join the thumb with another finger, it increases that energy. Whereas when you push down on the nail, it decreases that energy. Mm. So I think this is one that people might want to use like frequently. I want to use it every day, I think, <laughs> not yeah. to eat chocolate. <laughs> yeah, so whenever you want a chocolate, you would instead maybe, Yeah. you don't have to stop and do it. I mean, you could just, you know, go about your uh, day, but just hold this mudra mm -hmm. for a few minutes. Good thing. Mm -hmm. So can we, can we go on to the next fingers? Because yeah. I think this is really interesting. So fire, indulgence. Yeah. So f um, or and this one is uh, air. You see. So we we say there are five elements, right? Means that matter can be in five different forms. Mm -hmm. Matter can be solid, we call it earth. Matter can be liquid, we call it. Um, water. Mm -hmm. So it just, it doesn't mean just the water you drink, but it's mm -hmm. anything that's in liquid form. Yeah. Matter can be in radiant form, fire, mm -hmm. or matter can be in the form of gas, air, yeah. or space. Mm -hmm. You can have empty space. So each finger relates to a different one of those elements. Okay. Now we, we always think we should start here or start here. Mm -hmm. But actually, if you put your hand like this and it's a circle, you see, so it's earth, water, fire, air, space. One more time. Earth. See, so I don't know in Sweden where you wear your wedding ring, but. Um, yeah, the wedding band here. Yeah. yeah. So you wear it on this finger. Yeah. You see, so I mean, I know people do it just because it's tradition. But maybe why is it that tradition? Mm -hmm. Well, earth is the energy of stability, security in life. So when you get married, you want a stable relationship. You see, so you would wear your wedding ring on that finger of stability. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, water is the little finger. Yeah. Fire is the thumb. Fire is... It like fires everything else up. You know, you have an opposable thumb. It's the only one you can join with the other fingers. Yeah. Right? Um, air, yeah. you know, which is the index finger. Yeah. And then space, the middle finger. Yeah, space. Right? So these are the okay. five. Water, um, fire, air, space. Yeah. yeah. Good. So if we wanted to increase that energy, mm -hmm. right, we would join the thumb to that finger. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to decrease that energy, yeah. we would push down on that one. Mm -hmm. um, also, anyone who's worked with the chakras knows that um, we relate, we use these different elements, right? So we have the first chakra is earth. Second is water, third is fire, fourth is air, the heart chakra, and space, the throat chakra. Mm. You see, so also when you use chin mudra, mm. right, and you have your hands like this, it's you're receiving energy and you're stimulating the heart chakra. Mm. And for me, for example, a lot of um, I can often feel that I have. Uh, blockages in my heart uh, throat chakra mm -hmm. could i then start doing this yeah to so work with yeah to work with that chakra mm -hmm. daily right right yeah so if you wanted to increase energy to the throat chakra you mm -hmm. might just join the um middle finger with the thumb yeah and then you could use it in meditation, or maybe you could just use it when you feel a particular blockage. 
Yeah. Could I also, for example, uh, spontaneous ideas come to mind. Uh, could I also use this together with, you know, sometimes you find a, a kind of mantra or affirmation to, yeah, to work with your chakra. Could you do this to increase it or, you know, um, affirmation and a mudra? It becomes some kind of mantra or meditation. Right, right. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever feels good, huh? Uh, not necessarily whatever feels good, but you can, if you know what you're doing, I think you can. Yeah, <laughs> good thing. Yeah, because, you know, also we say that the different chakras have different mantras that go with them. Um, and this is also in the book. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So like the, if you wanted to work with the throat chakra, this has the mantra hum. Hum. Yeah. Hum. And you, you repeat that over and over again. Yeah. Well, actually, you're repeating it without even realizing it. Because if you ever just close your eyes and sit very, very quietly, you'll notice that every time you inhale, the breath makes the sound so, mm -hmm. and every time you exhale, it makes the sound hum, mm -hmm. mantra of the throat. As it passes the back of the throat, the breath is constantly saying hum. Everything is so well thought out. Mm -hmm. So... We have gone through the elements, each finger, the chakra, and a few mudras. Should we, so, so this is one to increase. Energy to the heart chakra. Heart. Throat. Uh, throat. And this would be the, starting with the root chakra. Yeah. And then the um, sacral chakra. Sacral chakra. And here we say this is the, the mind. Yeah. And the mind is the energy of the palm. Mm. I mean, if you think about it, when people um, traditionally, businessmen, when you, you make a deal, you shake hands. Mm. I mean, why do you shake hands? I mean, I know it's tradition, but no, but traditionally, you see, you exchange energy with the other mm -hmm. person, you see, mm -hmm. and you seal the deal. Yeah. Right? You see, you see them, you see them. There it goes again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. You see, so when you say, okay, let's agree on it, you sh let's shake on it. So you're exchanging energy with the other person to prove that you're serious. Yeah. I mean, that's of very nice. And maybe something that we don't think about mm -hmm. very often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're all using prana, even if we don't never heard of it and don't know what it is. Oh. And we're all using mudras. Yes. And I think it's so this book grows on me <laughs> by the minute since we are actually going back to basics, going back to origin by learning about these mudras. So how have mudras, um, I don't know if this is a weird question, but how have mudras um, had, a, had a part in your life? I know that it's part of your natural um, interest in, in yoga and meditation. But have, has it had any impact on your life other than that? I think it's a way of, because I, I've been doing asanas for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a way of sort of going one step further, yeah. you know, to channel the energy. Mm -hmm. And also pranayama. Mm -hmm. I, I think we didn't mention the breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. But you can also do mudras when you're... Um, doing pranayama, mm. you know, and it, it um, makes the effect even stronger. Yeah. So a lot of our, not all of our um, 
members in the book club are uh, are into yoga. But I'm thinking this book is interesting anyway because they can always use the mudras. You don't need to do any physical yoga. Um, but a lot of our members do like meditation, for example. So that's why I'm thinking this is a, a bigger book than just two yogis. So um, the first chapter of the book yeah. is exercises for the hands. Yeah. Now, I would think probably all or almost all of your members work on computers because yeah. nowadays we all work on computers. Yeah. Right? So what happens is you're sitting like this all day and people are having a lot of problems, you know, carpal tunnel syndrome, repetitive stress injury, arthritis, mm-hmm. bursitis, which is an inflammation of the joints. So the first chapter is for anyone who works on a computer, mm. which nowadays is everyone. Yeah. So whether you do yoga or not, you know, you you want to keep your hands flexible. See, and now of course people are having problems because they're sitting like this all day and they're having problems with these joints. Mm-hmm. So the first chapter gives exercises that people can do to counteract the problems of sitting like this all day. Yeah. And of course, you sit like it's not just sitting like this, but you're it's actually higher the body. So it's like your be, people are becoming more and more round shouldered. People are having trouble with their upper backs, with their arms, you know. So then they they have to have operations to you know release the um, the tightness in the wrists. Yeah. So why not just do some simple exercises? on a regular basis so that you can counteract the negative effects of working on a computer. Yeah. So actually when I was writing the book, I I, I said this to the the publisher that I think the first chapter is for everyone, whether they yogis or not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all modern people who work on computers. Yeah. So you could say that mudras um, also for those who don't do yoga, you can skip the yoga. It doesn't have to be the next step from yoga, asanas. It can also be together with meditation or whenever you uh, feel the need of chocolate. No, this is the way. Uh, or whatever. Yeah. So useful. Very useful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So... Um, what do you think about mudras in the world today? So you have had it in your life for quite some time. But this, for me, I have never seen a book about mudras until I saw the, the Norwegian version of, of your book. So what do you say about the, the, the trend or so for mudras in the world? Um. Well, I think people are becoming more aware of it. I mean, nowadays, everyone knows this mudra. Um, And I think once you start sort of being, you know, when you're not aware of something, you see it, but you don't really see it. You know, but once someone points it out to you, then, of course, you see it everywhere. You see, like, this one that I told you about, you know, people go into church and they never look at the hands of the statues. But once someone says to you, look at the hands, you'll notice that they're all doing different mudras. So I think it's something that's there. And I think um, it's something that's interesting, you know, once we become aware of it. I understand. I, I totally agree with you. I think the same. When I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, of course, we want to dig, dig, dig into this." Mm-hmm. So we have gone through quite a lot. I think. Is there anything else from the big book that we should? Because I, I also know that you you tell us what in certain circumstances or or. Um, um, symptoms and stuff. You, you you can use different combinations of mantras, um, mudras, and meditation and pranayama. 
do we have we forgotten any could we could we mention more we were into indulgence we were into um but isn't there also for um symptoms like headache and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but you know we just say headache but what kind of headache is it mm-hmm. i mean it's very different is your headache here mm-hmm. or is it back here you see so there are different mudras there are because those two headaches actually have different um energy different problems you see so like if you had a headache here Mm -hmm. right um one good mudra to do would be like this i don't know if you can see this yes i can it's uh, in yeah but I mean, you wouldn't sit like this. You would sit with it in your lap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what does this help with? Well, um, this is called. This helps to balance the heat in the body. Mm. You know, in um, Indian medicine, uh, which is called Ayurveda, they're very interested in the effects of heat and cold in the body. You see, so some conditions are considered to be heating conditions. Some are cooling conditions. Um, so this mudra, which is called Agni mudra, Agni right. means fire in Sanskrit. Um, it helps to balance the heat in the body. And it's also very good if you have, um, you know, a headache in the front. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people suffer from headaches, you know, um, So you could use mudras for that, or, you know, maybe you've had a very difficult day. You could just sit quietly for a little while and, you know, just do some mudras that would help to um, channel the energy in a less, um, maybe less stressful channel. Yeah. I think it's somewhat something, it's a simple thing that everyone can work with. Definitely. And do you give us ideas for different um, symptoms and uh, situations in life uh, where we can, and and you show with very nice pictures and step-by-step procedures of how to do um, together with the mantras and pranayama. So it's a, it's a very uh, practical book. Mm -hmm. So is there any, any, any mudra that you do daily? More than this, whenever you meet someone? Uh, well, because I meditate daily. Mm-hmm. So I um, I use Jnana Mudra personally because yeah. um, I find that I tend to be sometimes a little ungrounded. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so I like to use this Mudra. Which one was it now again? The one yeah. where you have the hands down. The down, yeah. Turning the index and thumb, yeah. and the fingers are pointing down. Yeah. So I like this one. I use it on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And I do um, I do pranayama regularly. So I, I do mudras with pranayama. Mm-hmm. Depending on the pranayama or depending on your mood and... Yeah, depending on the pranayama. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they've been doing a lot of research now on the effects of pranayama on viruses. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're actually using like different pranayama techniques to counteract, um, you know, like COVID. Mm-hmm. And one that they found, I know this is a little off topic, but... No, it's very on topic. I mean, we're not over pa- the pandemic yet. Right. But they found that there's, there's a, um, a pranayama called Brahmari. Brahmari. Brahmari means the bee. You know, like um, the honeybee, mm-hmm. the bumblebee, yeah. you know. And um, it's when you... It's like a humming sound. Mm-hmm. So you inhale a snore and exhale a humming. So I can demonstrate, and then I'll, I'll tell you about the scientific research on this.
And they found that when you do humming like that, it actually increases what's called nitric oxide in the nostrils. You know, because air is mainly nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Now, normally we don't use nitrogen in our bodies. You know, we only use oxygen. But when you exhale in that way, the body actually converts that nitrogen to something called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide kills viruses. Mm -hmm. And they've done a lot of scientific studies just within the past two years on this. Mm. And I was amazed because I Googled it and I found all the different, you know, you can actually read the scientific studies. So it's not just yogis say that it should be like this, but you can actually read the studies they've done on this. Mm. Now, this pranayama brahmari actually has a mudra that goes with it that actually makes the effect even stronger. Mm. So, what you do is you would take your index finger and roll it down so it's next to the thumb. Mm. And then take your um, thumb and put it just on the edge of the uh, nail of the middle finger. And you would do this with both hands. And then rest the hands, palms upward on the knees, mm. and then do the brahmari like this. <laughs> And it actually makes the effect even stronger. The snoring is quite hard to do. Yeah, um, I think it, it's hard in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So for beginners, we teach them just to hum. Ah, okay, that's why, because I've done the humming before. So the, the snoring part, what does that have to do with it? Is it because it was the humming outward that created, that converted mm -hmm. this? Um, yeah, so you were saying you feel that you have blockages in the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. The snoring is very good for that. Mm -hmm. It helps to break up those blockages. Mm -hmm. Good. Then I'll start to snore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyone who has a job where they need to use their throat chakra a lot, mm -hmm. which is most most people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, of course, if you're a singer, you're an actor, but even if you're in business, you have to speak to people all the time. Or yeah. if you're a teacher, you're speaking all the time. Mm -hmm. See? So... You know, a lot of times we uh, we hold stress in the throat. Mm -hmm. So by doing that snoring, it helps to break up that uh, that blockage that we create by the stress. I also tend to think that a lot of self confidence is in the throat chakra because if you if you don't have blockages, you you feel more confident in speaking and in. I don't know if it has anything, if it goes together, but to, to me, that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we say also the um, self confidence relates to the, uh, the solar plexus, the fire center. Mm -hmm. Because um, when you have no self confidence, we say, first, I think we, we say this even in the West, he's got no fire. Mm -hmm. it's like yeah. Really sort of cold, um, insecure person. Mm -hmm. right? So I think it also relates to the, um, the solar plexus. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else we should um, check box before we end this very informative and practical interview? Um, well, just to mention to your um, club members that I'm going to be teaching a, a course in the autumn in this and it's a five-week course starting I think the 7th of September so it'll be like Wednesday evening and it's online online yes it'll be an hour and a half so the, um, online and it will be in for, for the Swedish market only or uh no no oh. 
I live in London, so I'll also advertise it here in the UK, but it will be in English yes. with no translation. And I heard that Frederick Binet here in Stockholm will be part of it in some way. Taking the bookings in, because I think it's easier than doing an international transfer. So he'll be taking the bookings in Sweden and um, he'll be advertising it to his students as well. Yes. And we will certainly have a good offer for Sweden, for um, Lips Energy members as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. We look very much forward to that. And um, it, well, during that course, you would profit to have the book handy. Yeah, I will ask people to have the book and, you know, I'll be saying, suggesting to them that they read certain pages each week to mm. go with what we're discussing in the class. Yeah, and then we, we together with you in class, go deeper with that section. Right. Mm. Yeah, because I think it's often difficult to just learn something from a book. Mm. Whereas I think if someone demonstrates it, mm then we can get it a little more easily. It's very true. And I think, um, and this is actually part of our vision and hope for all our members that read a lot. You can read, but you also have to practice. You have to embody what you read. So this is this goes very well in line with what we would like to do as a next step. We give out a lot of books, but we also want our viewers to actually practice and because that's the way you you evolve and, and that's what we all want right, right yeah you know in um yoga tradition is a saying is that you don't heal a disease by knowing the name of the medicine <laughs> <laughs> you know you actually have to take the medicine yeah. so it's nice to read about something but it's not helpful unless you actually practice it. Mm. It's very true. Wonderful, Swami. Is there anything else you want to say to the Swedish audience of yours? I'm very happy that these books are being published in Swedish and um, I hope you'll enjoy them and practice from them. Yeah, I hope so too. So, namaste, Swami. Yeah. Hope to see you. My soul greets your soul, and really, we're one. Really, we're one. Thank you.